Coming up on this edition of Community Insider, we take you behind the scenes of the upcoming 2023 White County Fair, all of the fair events, and all the great family fun. Stay tuned to that and much more on this edition of Community Insider. In Hillham, Tennessee, we're taking you to Standing Stone State Park, located in the Cumberland Plateau. It's the home of the world-famous National Roly Hole Marbles Championship. George Roberts, our reporter, takes you behind the scenes of this sport and the natural beauty that awaits us on this edition of Community Insider. The first year of this tournament was 1983. Okay. We, uh, we tried to get one in 1981. It got rained out. But it gave us a chance to, to regroup and build a beautiful yard here. It was built by the marble players, and we had a park ranger that knew a little bit about it. It all was put together to become just a great piece of, uh, of the landscape here. And that's the way marble yards are yeah. out in this country. 30 years ago, Bobby invited me to be the first woman to play. Uh -huh. And I had never heard of Roly Hole. Yeah. And they showed me, and I said, "That's a crazy game. Why don't you just put them in a circle and knock them out?" <laughs> <laughs> they said, "No, that's more challenging." I said, "Oh, yeah. yeah." So anyway, but I've been coming. Welcome to another edition of Community Insight. Join us as we travel Middle Tennessee, uncovering history and experiencing the adventure of unique stories and events coming to you inside your community. Taking a look at some of the events coming up for the 2023 White County Fair. Thursday, August 31st will be the sort of kickoff for some of the events happening at the fair. At 6 p.m., the open sheep show at the Ag Pavilion. Then, of course, the opening ceremony will begin at 6 p.m. Friday, September 1st at the Life Church Arena. Uh, but the day actually gets started around 10 a.m. with the Cedar Citizens Day and pageant at the Ag Complex, so make sure you're a part of that. And then don't forget the Classic Antique Tractor Pool will be at 7 p.m. at the Life Church Arena with 7 p.m. also a great band at the John Whitehouse Tennessee Backroads Band. Then on to Saturday, September 2nd, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., all kinds of great crafts, and you can take a look at the Culture Arts Exhibits. That's going to be open. Also, the beekeeping and honey. Enter the toy farm display, 4-H, at the Benton Building. Uh, also, the you can enter for the adult and junior poultry at the Poultry House. 12 p.m., the Tennessee Swine Circuit Hog Show at the Ag Pavilion. 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Commercial Building. All kinds of great activities. And then don't forget the truck and tractor pool is going to be at the Life Church Arena at 7 p.m. Sunday, September 3rd, the baby pageant at the Ag Pavilion at 1 p.m. And also, don't forget about the great exhibits is going to be open from 1 to 9 p.m. on Sunday. The elementary track and field will be held at 6 p.m. at the Life Church Arena on Sunday, September the 3rd. Monday, September 4th, of course, the rides will be open that night. Also, 5.30 p.m. will be pageants at the Ag Pavilion. Little Miss, Junior Miss, Fair Princess, and Fairest of the Fair. Monday, September 4th, the Open Western Horse Show will be at the Live Church Arena at 6 p.m. And then 7 p.m., a great band split decision at the John White House stage. Tuesday, September 5th, from 4 to 9 p.m., of course, all the regular exhibits and commercial buildings will be open. The Open Dairy Show starts at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. And then 6 p.m., the White County Pony Show at the Life Church Arena. 
At 7 p.m. at the John White House, there will be a talent competition on the main stage. On to Wednesday, September 6th, 10 a.m., the White County Pace Setters Day will be at the Ag Complex. From 4 to 9 p.m., all of the regular exhibit and commercial buildings will be open. 6.30 p.m., the four-wheeler race and motorcycle race, of course, right there, center at the Life Church Arena. Thursday, September 7th, there's going to be an open beef show at the Ag Pavilion at 5 p.m., the Heavy Machinery Rodeo at the Life Church Arena, including a great performance from Dramatic Endings on the stage at John Winehouse at 7 p.m. Friday, September 8th, of course, the County Fair Cruise In with classic cards and trucks. Make sure you go and enter the Gate 2, enter at Gate 2 at 5 p.m. for the Cruise In. At 7 p.m., the Rodeo by Outlaw Rodeo Company will happen right there at the arena. It's going to be a big night at the White County Fair. we get some great entertainment for On the Floor. It's going to be at 7.30 p.m. Friday, September 8th at the John Whitehouse Stage. Then Saturday, September 9th, the Open Mule and Drive Tour Show will be at the Ag Pavilion. 11 a.m., the Kitty Tractor Pool at the Ag Complex. 1 to 9 p.m., they're going to have all the exhibits and commercial buildings open. And then 3 p.m., the Cornhole Tournament at the Ag Complex. The Kitty Demolition Derby will be at the Life Church Arena at 6 p.m. And the Big Demolition Derby at the Main Arena, Life Church Arena, at 7 p.m. Then we're going to end the Saturday night with a great band, the Connection Band, at the Arena Stage. That and much coming up at the Watt County Fair. I hope you've enjoyed a highlight reel of what's coming up for all your family at the Watt County Agriculture Fair 2023. My name's Bob Fulcher. Okay, who do you work for? I work for Tennessee State Parks. Okay. I'm with the Cumberland Trail, State oh. Park and State Scenic Trail. Very good. So now then, what's your place up here now, Standing Stone? I get invited to be here at the National Roly Hole Marvel Championship okay. because years ago I was I worked with this park and uh, worked to to start this event with the local marble players uh -huh. and uh, and the park staff that was here and and uh, it turned out to be the right thing to do. <laughs> we wound up with uh, uh, a bunch of great folks coming out in year one. Had a big battle right here uh, uh, at the very yard, sitting back here, and um, and we've never stopped. Well, well COVID stopped us oh. for a year. But when, when did this start? Up here in the park. <clears throat> the first year of this tournament was 1983. Okay. We uh, we tried to get one in 1981. It got rained out, okay. but it gave us a chance to to regroup and build a beautiful yard here. It was built by the marble players, and we had a park ranger that knew a little bit about it. And it all was put together to become just a great piece of uh, of the landscape here. And that's the way marble yards are yeah. out in this country in these two big marble playing counties you know a marble yard is a feature um, that can fit into the woods now there's some indoor marble yards now but some of the most beautiful ones are just under the trees the way this one started it looks like it's real natural for it it makes everybody feel just right it does it's a really nice place up here so now this is every year just about the same time, right? Yes, it's it's always about the same time of year. Okay. And um, it's a couple uh, weekends after Labor Day. And uh, the folks who play marbles, uh, they play now all year long. But this is a culmination for many of them. They, they would care more about winning this tournament than maybe any other game that they might get into. Okay, so this is the, the grand spectacle of all of it right here, kind of. I, I, they could speak for themselves on that, but I do think most of them feel that way. Okay. This is the one where folks from all over the country do show up to see this because 
they hear about it one way or another. Yeah. And, um, and some folks are curious enough to, to show up, and, um, uh, and it gives a different feel altogether to this tournament than any other tournament that, uh, that occurs that I know about. <laughs> well, good. Well, I can tell everybody's just having a lot of fun here. I know I have. Yeah, and everybody's done a lot of good work, I can tell. We, we've tried to do uh, different things over the years. It's grown from just being a, a uh, <clears throat> roly hole tournament to being a marbles festival, you know, to show a connection that roly hole has with uh, a, a tradition that has variation all over the world. We've had people here showing off the marbles from Malaysia, marbles from Mexico, you know, through those games uh, from uh, all over the place yeah. because it's a universal thing. You've got a round stone. That's something special in itself. To have a sphere, come on, that's heavenly. That's what we've got in outer space. It is. <laughs> and then how do, you, how do you get those here on earth? Yeah. You've got to make them got to craft them. Nature makes a few spheres out there, obviously, mm -hmm. but um, but these have to be handcrafted. Man. And the more perfect they are, the better folks feel about yeah. it. Yeah, well, good, man. Perfection I'm, I'm, goes over pretty well here. Well, good. <laughs> I know it. It's a good time, and I'm glad to see you all putting the effort into it there, buddy. Well, there's a, a lot of effort that does go into mm -hmm. it, you know, from the folks that cultivate this yard. Mm -hmm. yeah. A few days ago, if you'd been out here, you'd, you've been seeing and laying <clears throat> new layers of dust down, wetting the yard down, clouds of new uh, loam uh, flowing over the top of it, yeah. and then um, a tire or a, uh, a metal truck wheel being drug across to to smooth it out, to give it a, a perfect pool table kind of quality yeah. out of earth. Yeah, put more work into it than to do a golf green. Yes, out of just plain silt yeah. from the river, yeah. from the Cumberland River. How can people be so dedicated as to create such a, uh, a field of play? Yeah. Man, they could love it. They love the game. They're good. Well, I'm certainly happy for you. Uh, I know I've had a good time here today, and I like to come back. Oh, I hope you'll be back. Yeah. Uh, you've Bob, seen a lot of good stuff. I have today. Rangers, the staff, everybody around just been great. Yeah. They have. Thank you for being here. I'm certainly glad. Uh, Bob, I hope to see you again. Now then, tell me your name. Kathy Runyon Swasina. And they call you what? The Marble Lady. The Marble Lady. <laughs> Where do you live? I live in Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. Now then, you've been coming here for 30 years. This is my 30th year this year. Yeah, and you were the first woman to play the Marble 30 Lady. years ago, Bobby invited me to be the first woman to play. Uh -huh. And I had never heard of Ho Rolly Hole. Yeah. And they showed me, and I said, that's a crazy game. Why don't you just put them in a circle and knock them out? <laughs> <laughs> they said, no, this is more challenging. I said, oh, yeah. yeah. So anyway, but I've been coming since. Okay, so now then, you started then, and it it, it made an itch that won't go away. <laughs> I've been playing since I, my four brothers said I couldn't play, girls couldn't play when I was about eight years old. Okay, but the roly hole thing. The roly really, hole, yes. That really, really One, Yeah, it grabbed my heart yeah. because there were so many good people here, and it, to see them so involved with oh, yeah. marbles. Yeah. See, I can see you down there about how much fun you were having <laughs> when I caught you a while ago. <laughs> so I uh, say, yep, yeah, I've got to have her. So now then, the, the marble like this has been going on for a long time. They started in 83, I believe. Okay, but now I'm talking about marbles. But marbles generally goes back to Roman times. Yeah. That's the earliest findings. The young boys played marbles from the marble stone, uh -huh. and their dads were practicing for the Olympics or whatever while yeah. they played okay. marbles. So now then, when did the roly hole thing catch on here in the country? Well, yeah. they had, the first game was, I believe, 1983. Okay, here. here. 
and then they started everyone started practicing they uh -huh. have they have um, places at their houses yeah. in their backyards yeah. to play at and yeah. practice and they play year round in some well, of now, the weren't marbles instead of like that we know as tournaments now weren't that going on like in the 30s or something like yes that? there were national marble tournaments um, that were held throughout the nation mm -hmm. and they'd get great prizes like a brand new bike one of the rodeo bikes or you know the really cool flyer bikes oh yeah and they would get big trophies and that started i believe in the almost in the early 20s if not the 18 or 19. now they were making their flint shooters back then they too. were making flint shooters now did i hear the tail right that they would chisel off a piece of flint kind of round and put it in a hole in a rock in a stream and let that water wash it around and around they could do that but it would take a long time a long time, time right the native americans did that okay they they did that with their stones okay and um so that was one way but mostly they would they would just grind it yeah this fellow over here if you if you want to know if a marble's been ground yeah. you just put it in the light and because there's little tiny flat spots all over it the light will jiggle jiggle oh, okay like facets yeah okay exactly yeah now they use the flint because they'll break the glass yes okay. <laughs> How about and that? and most people they tag no steelies no oh. if somebody tags steelies then everyone's like oh. uh -huh. <laughs> there goes I'm, and they won't play their good marbles they'll just play their crummiest marbles because uh, so they're, they're going to get shattered get <laughs> uh, now you were uh looking over the marble find game a minute ago the Oops. the marble hunt hunt okay yes we throw out like throughout the day about almost 300 pounds of marbles and we scatter them around the scouts were helping today for yeah. their service yeah and i have special prize marbles that mm -hmm. are included and when i say go the kids go and you you see them all come out with bagfuls bagfuls <laughs> well they get their 50 cents worth Yes. <laughs> I have a prize marble. You do have a prize marble. <laughs> and it's very it's, beautiful. It is, it is. Here, uh, let's take a look over, okay. over right there. Show that there. Okay. See the see the hand okay. handmade. This marble. is a handmade glass marble. This one came from a friend in Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> That's so neat. Yeah. So wrapped now, to protect. <laughs> yes. It will not come out of the package. <laughs> no, you can you can take it out now. I when I had them ship. Oh, I had okay. them wrap them okay. so they wouldn't Maybe. juggle around yeah. and chip. Okay, now then, this is a one-day event, right? This is a one-day event. I always come up a day early okay. or so and make a trip and just enjoy myself. <laughs> uh, so, every September usually. Every September. About, about the same. One time. year during COVID, they didn't have it, so I didn't yeah. come. Nobody yeah. came. But other the other 29 years, I've been there. Yeah. Well. I've been trying to get here for several years, and so this is my <laughs> Glad group. to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you, too. I've enjoyed it very much. So, Kathy, Miss Marble Woman, <laughs> you've got to tell me one more story. One more story. One more story. Charles Schultz. Oh, Charles Schultz. So, I had printed a small booklet on marble games, because there were no books out there. And he had gotten one, and he wrote me this beautiful letter, and he said, I hadn't thought about marbles for decades, he said, but I used to be a marble fanatic when I was a young boy. And he said, watch for this upcoming comic strip. And it was a nine-day series, and I, I've got it saved. It's at the museum. Yeah. And this little stranger kid came into town, and he fudged, and he cheated, and he won everyone's marbles illegally. <laughs> and so... They all went crying to Charlie, and they said, he cheated, he stole our marbles. And Charlie said, step back. And for the only time, and he challenged him for a game for all the marbles, and for the only time in his whole lifetime, Charlie Brown was allowed to win. And so I loved it. <laughs> well, Charlie Brown finally won. He won. He, he did. Won. Kathy, it's been so much fun talking to you. You too, George. I you will too. see you later. Okay, thanks. Bye. Then I move over to the diamond grinder. And when I get to the diamond grinder, I smooth them out more, get a little bit more round. Then I'll come up here and finish getting them close. And then I'll spin them. And this is just a take a grindstone just like that. You probably have
Yeah, but then I start just a little hole in it, and set that marble in, spin it against that rubber roller, and it expands it, and cuts it true, cuts it down. And then I measure with the digital calipers, get it, you know, precise, and just back and forth and spin it. Oh, good, good. Park Ranger Jonathan Williams okay. here at Standing Stone State Park. Okay, how long have you been? I have actually started my career here as a SIR, so Seasonal Interpretive Ranger, back in 2013. And after working at Fall Creek Falls and getting full time on at Burgess Falls, I transferred back here back in 2020. Okay, very good. You like the park? I love the park. Yeah. Everybody here seems to. Absolutely. Oh, that's, it's been pretty good. So you got the lake down here. We do. Now then, I don't think we can see the dam, but a little clip. How was that dam and the lake? What, how did it come about? What happened? So this park was created in the 1930s by the WPA, the Works Progress Administration. Okay. Yeah. Um, they, it was a New Deal project from FDR, and a lot of the local folks here, uh, it was just their way to make a living, make a make a dollar, send it back home. And so they done a big project here along with the resettlement administration as well. Uh, a lot of the land here used to be owned obviously by private folks. Mm -hmm. They moved off and when the WPA started their work, they built the cabins, they built the dam, they built some of the trails, essentially everything that's rustic here in the park, they built. So the cabins, most of those are still original from yes, the 30s. Yes, that is correct. Uh, if you uh, check out any of the rustic cabins, uh -huh. uh, those were built in the 1930s, and a lot of the wood inside those cabins actually are American chestnut, which was also, uh, the timber was cut here in the park. In the park. Yes. Yeah. Then the blight hit, and then it all went away. Now, all of this mostly was, I believe, after the blight anyway, uh -huh. or it was around that time. Okay. Period. All right. So this was left over probably. Yes, uh, some of it was. And uh, we have several cabins uh, that was from mm -hmm. the WPA still standing that is still used. Yeah. And a lot of them did just recently get re renovated. Yeah, but they're still trying to keep them in the old rustic style. That's, that is correct. Man, that's great. All right, how big is the park? So the park here is roughly about a thousand acres. Now it's surrounded by about ten to eleven thousand acres of forestry. That's Tennessee. Is it Tennessee State Forest? Yes, it is. Okay. Standing Stone State Forest, State Forest is the technical name. Okay, great. All right, Highway 136 runs through the middle of it up to Hillman. So it runs up to Hillham. So technically the park address here is Hillham. Yeah. Now, if you talk to some of the old uh, locals here, technically the park is in Timothy, but Timothy technically no longer exists, exists. anymore. <laughs> Was that at the intersection of 52? That is correct. Okay. That is correct. <laughs> okay, great. Well, it looks like activities are winding down for today. Is that right? That you is, had a good day today? Oh, I think, I know I had a good day. I know we had a lot of good uh, folks here today, and mm -hmm. it seemed like a lot of people really enjoy their mm -hmm. stay here. Well, does the park stay busy most of the year? It does. Okay. It does. Uh, we stay busy and especially on weekends, we're very busy. Um, and during holiday weekends as well, but anymore during fall break, mm -hmm. we stay busy then too. Fall time, the colors come out nice up here. That is correct. I've been up here and took pictures around the lake itself and there it's really nice down there that, that is correct yeah. it, it gets very colorful here and it, 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 it gets busy during the fall <laughs> well it's a small park but it has a lot to offer i found it does it does so not only do we have the national roly ho tournament like what's going on today uh, we also have the car show coming up on october 8th okay for this year and every spring we have the nature rally Okay. And during the summer months, we have weekly activities for all the guests, and also we do have the, the swimming pool here. Yep, well, very good. Well, I hope to see you again. Our time is just about up. All your local programs is home to you. Community Network Productions invites you to check out our website. That's Community TV, T N, all one word. Dot com. Also, we're on YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel on your smart TV or any mobile device or simply just Facebook and Instagram. 
We'd also like to hear from you with show ideas or if you've got a question about a show. Email us at communitytvtn at gmail.com. Forty-eight years, and so we're going to be speaking to uh, both of them. Nestor, good to have you on the show. Thanks As always, you. Donna, good to have you on the show. When I first started out, uh, we had a manual typewriter, hmm. and so we used that typewriter to type type in the name of the patient, and the name of the medication, and the directions. And so it was that simple. So you made your uh, whatever movements we had to make or need to make and it was ready for the patient. Mm -hmm. Today it is completely different in that um, that manipulation is the same but then everything is computerized and we work all over the computer all the time. That computer tells us when we pull a prescription up or get ready to fill it and get in the correct information it tells us uh, several things about that prescription item. Uh, if the patient's allergic to it and it's on the record, it tells us that. Uh, if we don't get everything just exactly as it should be, it alerts us to well, that. Well, that's good. And so it's absolutely, and this, <laughs> here's the thing about it. we had that label in that old typewriter and we zoomed it through. Now we have a big roll of uh, prescription labels mm -hmm. and the computer picks up that label that it's supposed to it shoots it out the pharmacist rechecks it puts it on the bottle mm -hmm. it's got the medicine in it and it's out to the patient yeah. use the uh, if we need to and sometimes we need to it tells us the computer does about uh, potential uh, crossovers are allergies are in conflict with uh, the medicine that the patient has been taking or maybe is going to take. So it's completely different from a lot of standpoints. It's, it's up to date and we do our best to keep everything just as modern as any other pharmacy. Right. And some new people to our area, a lot of folks who's moving in who may have horses, cattle, and stuff like that. Let's hear from you on, on what you're trying to do as far as they even need, meet some of those needs. Well, I've carried veterinary products for a long time. And of course, the expansion just keeps growing. Yeah. And new drugs out for the farmer and livestock, uh, livestock grower. And so uh, advancements made that's so helpful to keep the animals healthy and strong. Mm -hmm. and uh, get them ready for market and all that. And so